Beginning the installation of the Node 605, of course, starts with a little disassembly. First, you need to remove two screws from the rear, which hold the top into place. Top slides back and will come right off. Next, the two hard drive cages. Two screws hold each one in, one on each side. Removal of the screws and the cages will come right out. Next, got the center crossbar. We're going to want to take that out. Two screws. and center crossbar comes out. We now have a completely open working area and we'll be able to start installing components. Since we're going to be working with a mini ITX system today, I did want to give you an idea of what it would look like with a full-size ATX board in there. As you can see, it is not crammed in. You've got a good amount of working room all around it. Um, full-size ATX is going to fit without a problem, so you're not going to have any worries there. With the case opened up, first thing I'm going to do is put in the power supply. I'm using a shorter power supply today, however, there is room for a 180 millimeter power supply down here. Um, you can actually go to a 190 if you're only using one hard drive cage. So we're going to put the power supply in with the fan, obviously, to the intake, slide it into place, and it will get secured in with four screws. Next, we're going to put our standoffs in the appropriate place. So you see, we're going to be using an ITX board. So it's going to be only four standoffs. and put them right into place. Next, rear I.O. panel, snap into place. And we can then drop in the assembled motherboard. And we'll put in our four screws to hold the motherboard in place. I've wired up all the front panel connectors. Uh, something very interesting, the USB 3.0 connector also has a USB 2.0 port on it in case you don't have a board with USB 3. However, if you take a look, the USB 3 connector itself is very, very thick, gigantic USB 3 connector. On this particular board, it really has to be forced in as the USB 3 connector sits between the PCI slot and the um, built-in modem. So something you definitely need to look out for there. Uh, as I say, very, very snug fit and hopefully that's going to stay in for us. Mounting the optical drive is definitely a little bit different. Uh, slim optical drive brackets are attached to the drive itself. The drive is then put into place and as you can see there are screw holes on the bottom of the case which will line up with the threaded pieces on the drive brackets. It will go into place and then actually screws in through the bottom. As you can see the four screws go up through the bottom into the brackets for the optical drive. Next we're going to mount our GPU and one screw will take off the cover for the expansion slots and we can then remove the two blanks. These are not toolless, obviously. And we're ready to drop the GPU in. We're going to use an NVIDIA GTX 660 and EVGA superclock variety. Um, 
Not uh, the biggest card out there, certainly not a tiny card. Two slots. And we'll push it right into place. As you can see, we've got a good amount of room, but we don't have the hard drives in as of yet. That is going to be the determining factor on exactly how much room you're going to have for your GPU. I've installed the drives into the mount. Two two and a halves, as you can see. Simply screw in four screws. If you're using three and a halves, they will use screws here, and obviously three and a half will extend quite a bit further. And that will just drop into place. As you can see, it sits just above the optical drive and in front of the GTX 660. Now, even if you were using the second um, drive bay, the GTX 660 would still fit if you were using two and a halves, but obviously if you're using three and a halves, it's going to come out a bit further, going to block uh, the GPU, first PCI slot, and you're going to have to use a bit of a shorter GPU. When you're going in, the cable routing is going to be a little bit uh, difficult with no backside to the motherboard tray. However, everything went in and there's enough tuck areas to get away with uh, quite a bit. Um, I really didn't do much with the power supply cabling just to keep this air channel open. So I, we wanted to keep everything out of there and get as much air as we could to the GTX 660. On this side, we've got the air coming in without a problem for the CPU cooler. Um, all in all, not a very difficult install. Uh, very unique install, especially the optical disk drive, uh, the way that mounted up, and a nice clean result in the end.